Today in its 2012 Ford F-250 Super Duty, we're going to review and install the Airlift Load Lifter 5000, part number AL88396. Okay, a few things to know about our load lifter system is that it is, does have a capacity rated for 5,000 pounds. Now this does not increase your weight carrying capacity, so double check your suspension uh, rating on your vehicle to make sure you can handle that kind of loads. Now on the inside of each spring, it has a jount spring built into it. This engages at lower air pressures to better absorb the road shock and minimize bottoming out. Before we get started for our install, we'll go ahead and put some weight in the back of our truck and see how much it sags the truck down. We'll also go ahead and take a look at the suspension as it works with the load without the airbags in place. Now for weight in the back of a truck, it actually lowered the back of a truck by about two and a half inches. Also, if you take a look at the front of a truck, you'll notice it actually raised up. That's not going to do you any good at night when your headlights are pointing up in the air. So as we test drive our truck before our airbags are installed, you can see how suspension is working a lot, going up and down over the bumps, and also you can feel that it affects the steering a little bit as you go around turns. So we're going to start off by, with our spare tire already removed, that gives us plenty of working room underneath the truck. This heat shield needs to be removed as well. I use a 10 millimeter socket on these two bolts here, and a 13 millimeter socket on the two nuts up here. Remove two bolts, take this off the stud, comes right off. Next up, we have to remove this jump stop. We need to do this on both sides of the truck. There's a nut on top that we have to remove using a 15 millimeter socket or a ratchet wrench actually works really good in this application. Now the truck we're working on, and maybe your truck too, already has a gooseneck hitch installed or maybe a fifth wheel hitch, and our hardware goes right through the hole that um, our brackets for airbags use. Now, since we got the hardware here, we're actually going to reuse this, if you can, reuse this hardware right here. So part of our install to get ready is to remove this bolt and get it out of the way for now. If you don't have a fifth wheel hitch or a gooseneck hitch in your truck, you don't have to worry about this part. Now to get access to our hardware, I'm just going to simply unclip these lines and get them out of my way. Now, we got lines loose, we need to remove this as well. Now this will be reused, we need to save this, we'll just keep it out of the way for now. Now remember, note how your hardware was originally so we can put it back together originally. Now we can go ahead and start working on our airbags. We're gonna start off on our driver's side assembly. We got these plates right here. There's one that goes on top and bottom of the airbag, just like that. Next, we'll go ahead and put on an airline fitting right here. This is already has sealant applied to it, so all we need to do is thread it in until the sealant engages the thread. And then we can tighten it down one and a half times. Snug this down, and we're using a half inch wrench. Let's go ahead and do some assembly for our top plate here. This is a unique side. This is a right side or driver's side. It's going, to be a little bit, it's going to be a little bit different on the passenger side. Same principle applies, but we know that this shape goes on the driver's side. Flip this over the top. We're just going to leave it loose for now. Now we have to install this hardware from the bottom of it, because once it's put on, it'll be trapped. So on this part here, it has two layers welded together. We'll get the long 5 16 carriage bolt. We'll go in that hole right there. These two square holes, we'll get two shorter 5 16 carriage bolts. Now we'll rotate this around to these two holes, line up with the holes on the airbag. We'll add our two fine thread bolts here, lock washer and flat washer, and loosely thread these guys together. Okay. 
Now I'm just leaving this off finger tight for now because I like to do a test fit on there before i uh, tighten down everything for good. Okay, let's flip the assembly over. Make sure this plate's on the bottom. And work for a bottom plate here. Okay. I'm going to scoot this to the side for now. And work with this plate here. We're going to install a very short three quarter inch bolt here. Through this bracket. Like so. With these ends pointing up, this will sit in there. Matching washer, and then the lock nut. Now, I just want to snug this down where I can still move this around like this. So I'll snug this down. And I'm using a half inch wrench for this. We need to be able to move this around so we can install hardware because some hardware will be trapped when it's in its final position like this. Now we'll loosely install this top plate here. These two arms, we went uh, facing the same side as this long bolt on the bottom. And you notice these will be a little bit of an angle. So we'll go ahead and match up our plate to the two holes that match up. And we'll install these pan head bolts. Run these down flush. Okay. Now, when we get ready to do a test fit, you can leave these two bolts off right now. That's why I have only thing, everything finger tight. It may be a bit of a hassle to leave these bolts in there while you do your test fit. Personal preference. But to put them on there, we'll just go ahead and just loosen up our bolts. Just like this. This, go, this one will go in okay, uh, so you can probably leave that off when you do your test fit. But make sure, or, but when you put it in for good, make sure you have this in, inside here when you're ready to put it in for good. Okay, let's go ahead and just leave this guy alone for now. Now work on this bracket here, which will go up on the inside of the frame of the truck. Now there's a little bit of pre-assembly that we need to do for our bracket here. We'll get this little L bracket. It's gonna use a small quarter inch uh, bolt and flat washer. So I'll go through your existing hole here, and then a flat washer, and a nut. And we'll go ahead and snug these guys down using a 7 16 wrench and sock. Now you can put this little bracket on either side, it doesn't matter. The only thing that counts is that this part stays up. This, bracket, this little bracket right here will be used to reinstall the clip that we took off earlier that held those lines in place. Eight millimeter bolt and flat washer will go through here and through the frame of the truck. It's a little bit easier to see now than when I put it up there. And on the back side, we'll get a flat washer and a lock nut. Push our lines up out of the way. There's another clip right here by the shock. If you need extra room to push it up, you can undo that one. Take my bolt and my bracket, and I'm gonna push into this existing hole in the frame right here. This little cutout right here will match the location where I previously took out some hardware for the hitch. Now my hitch, the hitch is going to cover up the hardware, so I have to install it from the bottom like this. To help hold my hardware in there, I basically just taped him, uh, my hardware to my wrench. And when I run the bolt through, it'll throw it into it, and I can just pull it out. If you didn't have a hitch in a truck, this won't be so much of a problem. Now for bracket onto the side of the frame, we can take this clip that we took off earlier, reinstall into our lines, 
and put it into a metal clip that we bolted on. All right, got the one bolt started here. Just, just tight enough to hold it in place. And then we can go ahead and reinstall our hitch hardware. Now, if your vehicle didn't have the fifth wheel gooseneck hitch in there, you would use the provided hardware that comes with the kit. Now I want to take a few moments and safely raise the weight of our truck off our suspension to give us more working room. I'm using a pole jack here, but once you get it high enough, then you want to support it to keep everything safe. Now I want to make sure we have our bolts in place and we'll work it in. I want to push all these lines out of the way. Again, higher it up truck, the easier this is. If you get it so far, push it down. In the place. Make sure the bottom part of our bracket here goes over top of this. Kind of it's made to fit inside there. So I'm gonna make this slip go a little bit far forward. Now this bolt will go through the existing hole where our down stop used to be. We'll line that up and push it into place. Now we have it in place, things to look for, to so make sure this sits over the U-bolt here for the springs on both sides. If you want this as close as possible to one side here, there'll be a clamp that will hold in place to ensure that. And also you want to double check these, this bolt right here. You may want to have it on the inside or the outside of these lines here. You got a little bit of flexibility in them to move them as necessary. Just make sure we're not rubbing on each other. Now once you're satisfied to test it, I'm gonna take it back down and remember these fasteners that are hidden. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten everything up and put it back into place. Make sure this is in a straight line. And we'll tighten down our hardware. Okay. These two bolts on top will get tightened down with a 916 wrench. Now these two bolts here and here will get flat washer, 3 8 and a lock nut. Now this clamp right here is going to go behind the U-bolts. And we're going to put it to the hole that's closest to the springs on both sides. And now also get a flat washer and a lock nut. Do the same thing on the other side of the clamp. On the bottom here, I have this clamp. It has a curved spot right here to match the axle. We're we'll gonna slide on our two bolts. Once again, flat washer and a lock nut. Again, just leaving us loose for now. Let's go ahead and reinspect all the lines that are around our airbags, make sure nothing's pinched or getting uh, damaged in any way. All right, once we're set aside with everything, how everything's sitting, let's go ahead and tighten it down for good. I'm gonna work way my way, I'm gonna work my way from the top down to the bottom. So let's get this little bolt done for good and I can get my wrench back out. and we'll torque down that big bolt. Now on our clamp, we want to even it, we want to tighten it down evenly on both sides.
Again, once again, as we tighten these up, we want to make sure the length of our bolts are even on both sides. All right, now also there's a hole provided in our bracket that we can use that to keep our parking brake line away from our airbag so it doesn't rub on it. I also like to zip tie these lines together. Just bundle them up a little bit lightly. Just make sure it stays away from the bottom edge right here. We should be good to go. Now we'll go ahead and run our airline tubing here. I already have mine cut in half. Basically just unfolded it and cut it in half. We can use part number AL10530 from Airlift. Let's take our airline. I'm gonna run it to my fitting here. I'll line it up so it just goes in. Make sure you have it square have it squared up, and then I'll push it in one more time until it stops. It'll stop once, then you push it in one more time, give it a tug to make sure it's tight, and you're good to go. Now to run our airline towards the back bumper, we just simply follow the frame rail. We use all the lines and wires back here, basically to, to thread it through all of them to help hold it up and out of the way. You really can't see much of it. We got back here. You can see where I have a couple loops here, extra length, which is fine. If it'll work out in case you have uh, an upgrade to uh, like maybe a compressor system for your airbags. Now, the, now our airline fitting, we're going to use the old license plate uh, hole trick. We'll make sure our license, our license plate is flat against the bumper. I'm going to use a 5 16th drill bit. Go through the plastic into the metal inside. Okay, now I use a small pilot hole, and I'm going up to my 5 16th drill bit. Before we add this to our bumper, we'll go ahead and add a couple pieces of hardware to it. Take the nut, we'll thread it on. I'm gonna run this all the way back. Star washer. And then we'll go ahead and run it through our holes. To the top of this, it's gonna get a rubber washer. flat washer, and a nut. Go ahead and run these down as far as we can. Take up all the slack. Then we have plenty of valve exposed for our air chuck. And we can tighten these down using a, a half inch socket as well. Now we'll go ahead and take some zip ties. You may need more than what comes with the kit and we'll zip tie our loop, making sure it's safe and secure and out of the way. Now that we're done with driver's side, we'll go ahead and basically repeat the same process over on the passenger side. However, there's a few differences, and we'll go ahead and point those out. Now, also on the passenger side, before we install the airline tubing, we have this heat uh, shielding that goes on top of the airline tubing. We just slide it on the end, put it into place, and just put it as close as we can between, or put it, we put it between the closest points between the airline tubing and the exhaust. Now basically from this edge of this plate, although this plate is a different shape, from the, pass, from the driver's side, everything else here and down is pretty much identical process. Now on our passenger side, we need to install a heat shield. This is a piece of metal right here, it basically will get clamped to the exhaust. So we can take our tabs and just bend them like that. And then one more time this way. We'll take our clamps, we'll undo them and then put them around our exhaust and loosely put them back together. Slide one up. Put a heat shield where we want it between our airbag and our exhaust. Make sure you have plenty of clearance. If you can put your hand through there, you should be Good to go. Once we have it the way we want it, we'll go ahead and tighten it down. Once we're finished with our install, we can go ahead and reinstall our heat shield and our spare tire. 
Okay, now get the same load back in your truck where airbags installed. And you can see about, with about 60 pounds of pressure, it brought our truck back up to level height. Now as we go on a test drive, just driving down the road, you can feel the truck feels a little bit stiffer, but it actually handles a little better as well. The load in the back is not making the truck roll back and forth, basically. Now I'll go over to alternating bumps. You can see how suspension works back and forth as it goes over each individual bump. Pick up speed a little bit, make some sharp turns. I can definitely tell how it handles a little bit better and a little bit quicker. Since there's more of a weight being transferred back to the front end, it steers a little bit better. It almost feels like a truck didn't have a load in the back, even though you can tell when you accelerate and when you hit the brake. But handling wise, it feels just like a normal truck empty. And that'll finish it for an Airlift Load Lifter 5000, part number AL88. 396 on this 2012 Ford F250. Click the link below to shop, learn more, or visit us at eTrailer.com.